The season's about to change and it's time to spring clean my mixed media art tools. I thought I'd show you the exact process that I use for almost everything and share the one habit that makes the whole experience super easy. Now, I know that watching me clean my tools may be as exciting as watching paint dry, but I promise you, you're going to learn several things that will change the way that you take care of your tools and how to save your plumbing while you're at it. I'm Jackie Bernardi and welcome to my studio. All right, so I'm going to just take a selection of tools that I've been using over the past few weeks that I let dry completely so that there was hardened paint on them and in them. So these brushes are rock hard. Uh, the paint is just in there uh, so that I can show you my technique of saving brushes that you might think need to be thrown out. They don't need to be. And also to show you how I clean all sorts of different tools that you see me use regularly and tools that you probably have in your studio. So the first thing is Murphy's oil soap. And you've heard me talk about this before, but it is a miracle cleaner for, for anything in your studio, so long as it's acrylic based, right? It will clean it all, whether it's your brayers, your paint shapers, your brushes, your stencils, your gel plate, Murphy's oil soap is indispensable. What I'm demonstrating right here is one way that you can use to get paint off your brayers. So I'm just putting Murphy's oil soap directly down on a piece of plastic and I'm running the brayer over the Murphy's oil soap so it gets complete coverage all over the rubber part of the brayer. And then I'm just going to fold the plastic sheet all around it so that there's contact between the Murphy's oil soap, the plastic and the brayer. And I'm going to leave this for overnight. And then tomorrow I will continue cleaning it. But the Murphy's oil soap will work all night long to soften up that paint so it comes off very easily. Now that's just one way to do a brayer. You'll see another way in a little bit. And then I put all these brushes and palette knives inside the Murphy's oil soap to sit overnight. We're not going to clean all of these tools tomorrow, <laughs> just a selection of them, but it will be a wide selection so you can see how I handle the cleaning of different types of tools. So while that is pushed off to the side, I'm going to go to the gel plate. Now there's two parts here. There's the actual gel plate, which has um, paint and paper stuck to it. And I want to go, I want to get it completely clean. And there's also the plexiglass that the gel plate lives on. Now this plexiglass, I don't care that there's paint on it, except that there's a big ridge around where the gel plate edge is and the plexiglass. And there's a huge amount of paint build up there, which could be problematic. So I wanna break down that ridge. So I'm just going to put Murphy's oil soap on it and I'm going to let it set overnight, maybe a couple of overnights until it softens and I can get the paint off easily. I love my giant jug of Murphy, Murphy's oil soap. Um, I usually buy them two at a time so that I'm never without uh, it's fairly inexpensive and it's, it's a workhorse in my studio. It cleans everything. So it's the next day. And this here is a really neat mat for cleaning brushes. It's designed specifically for makeup brushes, but you can just as easily use them for your studio brushes. And it has all sorts of textures and nubs on it, which is great for cleaning. Now in the sink, I'm protecting the plumbing by putting in the drain cover and then putting a mesh, um, uh, what's that called? A mesh thing over it so that if any paint does happen to get into the sink, it won't go down the drain. And there's a system for protecting the drain and a backup system with the mesh. So that's perfect. Here I've got my magic eraser, a toothbrush, a wire brush and this here is a brush comb and be careful with the the uh, needles on this they're incredibly sharp 
They do a beautiful job of getting paint out of brushes, but they're sharp, so be careful. This here is a conditioning pink soap and a conditioning white soap. They're both the same thing, they're just different brands. You'll need a whole bunch of containers to put clean water in and to you know put your brushes or palette knives away once you've cleaned them and some paper towel. A paper towel is also a workhorse because this is what we're going to use to get majority of the paint off of the brushes. So we're not putting it in water that goes down the drain. We're really, really going to work hard to get the paint off using the paper towels. And this should be a habit that you keep in the studio. You should keep paper towels nearby and completely wipe off the paint from your brush and then put it in water or then put it in Murphy's Oil Soap. You'll be doing your plumbing a huge favor if you do that. This brush here uh, did soften overnight. This is a watercolor brush and uh, it's actually super clean. I really don't even need to use the wire brush on this, but I just want to show you how to use the wire brush. You don't need to be afraid that it's going to tear out your bris bristles. It will only do that if uh, you have a very, very cheap or cheaply made brush. This is a very high quality brush that I'm using it on. And now that I've gotten all the residue off, I just swish it around in some clean water and that brush is done. Look at how clean that is. And that was completely hardened with paint yesterday. Oh, that's so satisfying. I'm gonna put it off to the side, let it air dry while I work on these other brushes. So this one here, it's softened also, uh, but there's still quite a bit of paint in there. So I'm definitely using the wire brush on purpose this time to really get in there and break up. Although the acrylic paint has softened, it's still in there. So the wire brush is helping to get it out. And I just dipped it back into the Murphy's oil soap and then running it over this brush mat and it's doing a beautiful job of just working out all the paint. See, nothing's coming out now. So that's completely clean and will air dry as well. This palette knife, the large palette knife came super clean. Like the, the acrylic paint literally just came off in the paper towel just by running it over it. it. It's squeaky clean. It really doesn't need anything. I'm using the magic eraser on here just to get the residue from the Murphy's oil soap off so that the next time I use this palette knife, I'm not, you know, putting Murphy's oil soap onto my painting. Catalyst Wedge. Now, Catalyst Wedge is unique because it's made of silicone and silicone, it's very easy to get the acrylic off the silicone. It still needs to be soaked in Murphy's Oil Soap. I mean, you could pick it off, I suppose, but that would take a lot of time and effort. This, you just soak it overnight and then you run your paper towel over it a couple times and it's basically clean. Now this one here, there are a couple spots where there was still some residual paint. So I just took the toothbrush, got some Murphy's oil soap and water on it and just went to town, like brushing your teeth really aggressively. <laughs> but didn't have to use a whole lot of effort and this came out squeaky clean, almost as if it were brand spanking new. And again, that's so satisfying. And also for me, it motivates me when I pull out a squeaky clean tool from my, you know, in my studio to work on something. There's something very inspiring about starting a piece with what feels like brand new tools. Look at that. Completely clean. 
in no time at all. So the habit that I mentioned before, the habit of wiping things off on paper towels, the habit of keeping a jar of Murphy's oil soap on your workstation, that's the habit, right? So when you're done working, you wipe everything off on paper towel and then stick it in Murphy's oil soap. And then that way, if you can't get to cleaning your brushes or your tools that day, they're gonna be just fine the next day and it's going to be even easier to clean at that point. That's the habit I would love for you to get into. Now this brayer here, this was the one that was wrapped up in the plastic and look at how easily the paint came off and any residual paint that's left on there, it's not really stuck on there, it's just moving around. So I'm just using the toothbrush and just cleaning it. Now with brayers, you want to be sure that you get all of the metal apparatus cleaned also so that there's no buildup of paint. If it builds up too much, it can prevent your brayer from rolling and then, then you've got a useless tool. So just make sure you get the edges and the ends too. Now I know some people love picking the paint off of a brayer. You could certainly do that. It just takes so long. This, it just slides off. And I'm about to show you by using a brayer that has actually been sitting in a bucket of Murphy's oil soap for about, mm, gosh, four or five days, maybe even longer. And uh, I mean, it looks terrible. It looks all gunky and gross. See? But man, wait till you see how quickly this gets cleaned. Right, just a little bit of paper towel, just run it over the brayer a couple of times and you've got a completely clean brayer. Gorgeous. There we go. Just a little on the ends there. I've got to go back in and clean off, but I mean, it's essentially perfect. Now this is a silicone paint shaper. So same deal as the catalyst wedge. Paint is going to come off very easy. I'm not gonna lie. I think that's part of the reason why I love using the shapers and that I love using the catalyst wedge. Uh, it, it, they are no headache tools, right? Things just come off very easily. I really like them. This here is a silicone uh, pastry brush and, or basting brush, excuse me. And I use that for mark making sometimes. Again, it lives in my studio, not my kitchen. And here, literally all I did was just run some um, Murphy's oil soap through the bristles, scrubbed it on my, uh, on my glove a little bit and then put it in water and it's squeaky clean. Now this here is the badger brush and for all of you who have written to me asking how do you clean a badger brush, this is it. You use some Murphy's oil soap and some water, you work it through the bristles, then you take this uh, brush comb and you keep working the soap through the bristles and you go over it and over it and over it with the comb. Um, at first it's a little hard to work your way through it. It gets easier and easier and that comb is ripping the, the acrylic paint right off those bristles. It's amazing, right? It will also get rid of any loose bristles that you have. Now before you think that this is dangerous or will ruin your badger brush, let me tell you something. I've had this badger brush for 28 years now. This is the technique I've used since day one using this brush and this brush still works beautifully for me. So don't be afraid to really go at it with the brush comb, right? So just uh, swished it around in that bucket of water just to get the soap out of the bristles. We're not done with this brush, but we're gonna set it to the side for a moment and we're gonna go back with each of the brushes that we've cleaned so far. And we're going to do this next step. Now this is 
technically this is not necessary, but I've done it and I have yet to throw out any of my good brushes because this, this really keeps them in great shape. These are conditioning soaps. They are going to continue to clean your brushes, but they're, they also have conditioning type ingredients in them. And so it makes the bristles last longer. It, it supports the bristles better. I, I don't really know how to say what I am, what this actually does, but I know that my brushes feel better and last longer when I use this system. So they've already been cleaned. This step isn't for cleaning, it's for conditioning. And I use it with the Badger brush as well. And I just work it through with my fingers. You don't need to use the comb here as much because we're not trying to get rid of paint. We're just, you know, making sure that the bristles are getting all the love they can get. Give it one last hit on the mat and run the comb through it a final time doesn't necessarily need the comb at this point, but no harm, no foul. I'm just going to rinse it off. Uh, just checking to make sure that there's no soap left in the basting brush. I'm going to throw that in the bucket, get any residual, anything off. Uh, these brushes, I mean, this brush here, I'm just using the white conditioning soap. There's really, really, they're just, pretty much the same product. I just have two of them and I just wanted to show you both. Just work it in. I have this little brush here that I'm cleaning is a very, very stiff brush. So the stiffer the brush, the more you have to really um, agitate it to get the paint out or get any conditioning ingredients into it. And then with the paint shaper, I'm just doing a final, final getting it all sparkly clean. And um, same with the paint shaper. Same with the catalyst wedge. I still like to clean as I go just so that I don't miss any big, just to keep the mess at bay. Okay, now that these are all rinsed, we're gonna take it out of the water. Uh, the badger brush though, we're going to take outside and this is really important. You don't want the water collecting into the wooden handle of the badger brush, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take it outside and I'm going to snap it to get all of the water out. And so I'll show you in just a moment uh, what the movement is that I do, but see that you just kind of snap it and all of the residual water comes out of the bristles, it goes flying, so don't do it against, don't do it when people are around. Uh, and then I bring it back in and I hit it again with the brush comb. And that's just to make sure all of the bristles are separated so that they dry evenly and consistently. And then when they do dry, they are so soft. This brush is so soft. And remember, it's used for blending paints and glazes, right? So it's just a super fine, super fine brush. And you want to treat it really well because it's expensive. Now this stencil is a unique, I have a unique situation with the stencil. And really, I wish I had realized that I didn't do this the day before, but um, the stencil on one side has black paint, right? You just regular acrylic paint. And then on this side that you can see the side that's up right now, it's actually a compound, an acrylic compound on there. I think it's the um, high solid gloss medium uh, that was left on there. And so I just put it in the uh, pan with some water and some Murphy's oil soap to soak overnight. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be enough soaking. We'll find out tomorrow. 
but in the meantime, I'm just getting uh, all the residual paint and paper off of this gel plate. Uh, because I let it set overnight, it's just coming off super easy, like all things do with Murphy's Oil Soap. And uh, just going to stick it in the bucket to rinse off. And uh, I'm going to take the magic eraser and use that to get any fine, fine, fine particles of paint or remnants of something either from the gel plate itself or from the water. I just don't want anything on my gel plate. Now, what I would normally do right now is I would condition the gel plate. I'm not going to do that in this video. If you want to learn how to condition your gel plate, go ahead and grab my free gel plate video guide. The link is in the description, 100% free. It's all about everything having to do with the gel plate, including how to clean and condition it, right? So that's where you can find that. This really isn't a conditioning video, even though we did that with the brushes. This is a cleaning video. So, I ended up having to wait two days to come back and do this. And of course, I was so excited about this plexiglass that I, I cleaned it before I turned on the camera. So just know all of the ridge buildup that I wanted to get off came off. And so did actually most of the paint, even though I didn't care about the paint coming off the plexiglass. I just really wanted the ridge of paint, paint to come off and it did. Now the stencil, the one side that just had paint on it, uh, I was able to get some of that paint off yesterday, but the side with the compound, nothing was budging. So what I did was I got rid of all the water and then I just put plain Murphy's oil soap on it, on both sides actually, and let it sit overnight uh, again. And that worked. So what you're seeing here, what I'm doing is getting all the sludge of the paint and the Murphy's oil soap off of the stencil and onto a paper towel because I definitely don't want this going down the drain, right? So I'm just scooping it out. I can just throw that away and then go back in with a sponge, the, the scrubby side of a sponge and clean the stencil, make sure that all the paint is off and um, that takes a little bit of elbow grease, I'm not going to lie, but still a lot easier than trying to chip away at it without pre-soaking. Now this, of course, is a Mylar stencil. You would not want to do this with stencils made out of paper or Yupo paper. Uh, this is really only for plastic-based stencils. All right, and look at that. I mean, it's not 100% cleaned the paint, but there's no more raised paint on there or compound. And it's pretty darn clean, almost looks brand new. And the paint and the compound on that particular stencil has been on there for months. So, I mean, it was really cured on there. And yet the Murphy, so Murphy oil soap still worked. Fabulous. All right, let's see how these other long-term soakers are doing. So remember, that was rock hard a couple of days ago, and now the bristles are just completely supple again. Um, they're filthy, but the hardened paint has been softened to the point where we can just take the brush comb or the wire brush and get all the paint out, swish it around in some water, put it in the soap, condition it, use the same process that we used on the other brushes here, now that the paint is out. Now, you may be looking at that and saying it's dirty. It's not dirty at all. In fact, if I brushed it over some paper towel, you would see there's absolutely no paint coming out of that. There's no tint coming out of that. But unfortunately, I had used a phthalo blue with that brush and uh, you know, the bristles got very attracted to that color. So the bristles will stay blue for a while, but blue will not turn out on any of my paintings. 
Now with this palette knife, I had some compound built up on it, not just paint, but compound, and it was being just a little bit stubborn. So I just simply took a straight edge blade and just scraped off the compound, which was super easy to do because it was soft. And now that palette knife looks brand spanking new. And look how clean this brush got. And remember just two days ago, that was still rock hard, right? Murphy's oil soap, my friends, be in the habit of putting all your tools in Murphy's oil soap. And if you want to make it super easy, put all your tools in Murphy's oil soap a day or two before you plan on cleaning and your cleanup time will be nothing. And that's it. I hope you really enjoyed this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up or leave a comment. And I hope to see you in the next video.